It's been said that for a man's legacy to survive the ages, it has to be carved in stone. With this thought in mind, mine is one such legacy. Excuse me, where am I now? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lucas Feifenberger, architect. I was born November 14, 1834, in Ludau, Germany, to John and Elizabeth Feifenberger, who emigrated here when I was a small boy. We settled near Dayton, Ohio, where John became a very good farmer. The family was firm on education, and I received an excellent education in engineering, construction, and architecture, and as a young man was apprenticed out to a local carpenter to hone my skill. That is, until word of gold came, being discovered out in California, and like many young men, I headed west to seek my chance at prosperity working in the gold fields. I was also a deputy sheriff out there for some time. Then I came back to Dayton, Ohio to visit with my family until that gold bug bit me again. One more time, I headed west but was urged by family to stop here in Alton in 1857 for a couple of reasons. One, the droughts were so bad on the high plains, wasn't a place fit for man or beast. Secondly, a former parish priest from Dayton had moved out here and became the Archbishop of St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church, Father Younger, and the family felt he might talk some sense into me. <laughs> Through him, I became charmed with this pioneer city, with its picturesque views, old buildings, and rich history, so much so that I decided to stay here and make Alton my home. It wasn't long before I established myself as an architect, using my Queen Anne, Italian 8, Georgian Revival, and other designs to grace Alton in the form of homes, schools, churches, and factories in this river town and later expanding downriver into St. Louis. In 1867, I married Elizabeth Mather, daughter of an Alton Pioneer family. Together we had five sons, Lucas Jr., Andrew, Jay Mather, George, and John. The two oldest died of tuberculosis, one in his teens and one in his early 20s. The surviving three were Jay Mather, George, and John. Of these, two, George and John, joined me at the office to make it Pfeifenberger and Sons. The number of buildings I've designed in this town is quite extensive and I won't stand here and bore you with all the names. However, I will mention a few that you may have heard. Entrepreneur and horticulturalist Henry Guest McPike, steamboat captain G.W. Gill, owner of the stone quarries Henry Watson, tobacco magnate John Drummond, Beale Brothers Homes and Factories, St. Mary's Catholic Church, the Haskell Home and Playhouse for Lucy Haskell, and my own residence located on State Street. I also became a well-known figure in the business and financial affairs in the city. My leadership and community service contributions span many years. I was Chief of the Alton Volunteer Fire Department in 1866 and served until 1872, at which time I was elected Mayor of Alton and served four terms until 1880. I was the originator of the Building and Loan Association here in town and served as its president in 1883. I owned four such building and loans with a net worth of over $9 million in assets. Just for the building and loans, not for my architectural firm. The largest of these was Piasol Building and Loan with a net worth of over $5 million. My political views landed me with the Democratic Party for which I served as a member of the Illinois State Central Committee. I was a member of the Catholic faith. I passed away April 18, 1910 at 85 years of age. The obituary stated my death was the indirect result of an accidental fall in which I'd suffered some broken ribs and some traumatic internal injuries. I had gotten up to use the bathroom and fell into an empty bathtub, striking my head. I was found by my son, Dr. Mather Pfeifenberger, who believed 
had suffered a brain bleed where a clot had formed. I left a surviving spouse, Elizabeth, and three surviving sons. In all the places I have been in my long life, none have taken me as much as here in Alton. Truly, my legacy lives beyond my time and into the future, for I have made my mark here, both in the physical and the literal sense. So when you drive around the older homes in this town, think of me sitting there at my drawing table, working on a new design. The next one might be yours. I bid you good day.